Hi Year 8. So, today we're continuing with our periodic table topic in science. We're going to be looking at Group 1, the alkali metals. For our starter task today, we're going to play this amazing Kahoot quiz to test our knowledge of the periodic table from the last two lessons. I'm going to put the quiz up on screen with the code so you can all join. Join quickly so we can get started. Well done on the Kahoot quiz there. Hopefully that's refreshed our memories from the previous two lessons. In today's lessons, our learning objectives are as follows. We're going to continue to develop and improve our understanding of how the modern periodic table is organised. We're specifically going to focus on the trends and physical properties of the group one elements and also how their reactions occur. Now, as we saw last lesson, group one are found on the left hand side of the periodic table and typically is listed as lithium through to francium. As you can see, hydrogen in this periodic table is positioned above group one, and that's because of the number of out electrons in its outer shell. But for the purposes of learning about the alkali metals, we're going to discount hydrogen today and just focus on lithium through to francium. So let's start off by looking at some facts, most of which we already know about the alkali metals. First of all, they all have one electron in their outer shell. We learned that when looking at atomic structure earlier this year. We've also mentioned that they are very reactive metals, but what we haven't really looked at is the fact that they become more reactive as we go down the group. And that's something that we'll be studying and looking at examples of today. And also as we progress into GCSE chemistry, our understanding of why that reactivity increases as we go down the group. Another thing we'll know about the alkali metals, which we'll see in the practical experiment video, is that they have to be stored under oil as they're so reactive with air and the moisture in the air around them. So we store them in a jar full of oil so that they won't react with those. We'll also see that the alkali metals are soft and shiny when you cut open their inner surface with a knife. The outermost part of them, which we see first of all, won't appear soft and shiny, which I'll show you in a moment in the video. Also, the alkali metals are so reactive that they're very rarely found in their pure form. They're always found combined with something else in nature. For example, chemicals known as salts, one of which an example is sodium chloride, common table salt. So, as we're working from home right now, I can't have alkali metals in my home because they have to be used in a controlled environment like a school laboratory. However, I've done this experiment many times, so I can talk you through looking at this video and explain the important parts of what we need to know about the alkali metals. Let's watch the video and I'll talk over um, to explain to you what happens as we go through. So in this experiment, this is lithium metal. And the lithium metal here is being cut, as you can see, by a knife. Now, as you can see, when that was being cut open, the inner surface of the lithium metal shows up very shiny. OK, but the lithium block that was used in the first place isn't shiny on the outside. Now, can anyone tell me why? I'll pause and you can give me your answers. So, as we've established, the reason that the outer surface of the lithium block is dull is because it has come into contact with some oxygen from the air or moisture from the air, which has caused it to react and form a layer of a compound on the surface of the pure metal. When we slice through the metal with a knife, we expose pure lithium metal and that is shiny with the typical metal luster, which is the chemical term for shininess. Now, as this video continues, we're going to see what happens as time goes on. As you can see, within a few seconds, the shiny metal that's exposed begins to dull down until it becomes dark grey like the rest of the metal. As a knife is drawn across that with no scratches, we then saw the shininess appear. Let's see what happens with sodium metal this time. Just like lithium metal, when sodium metal is cut into, we see the shiny inner surface. The outer surface, which was exposed to the air before, did have a white greyish colour on the outside, 
from where it had reacted with the air around it. Again, we can see the dulling happening as the surface has been exposed to the air and the moisture around it. So now we're going to look at what happens when the alkali metals are placed into water. We'll start off with a piece of lithium metal. Lithium is the highest alkali metal on the left hand side at the top of the group. As you can see, it moves around, it's fizzing and it would suggest that energy is being produced because it's moving and it's fizzing. This is sodium metal. A piece of sodium moves a little faster. Again, it fizzes, a gas is being produced and it's moving quickly around the surface of the water as well. On screen there, we also have a suggestion of what is happening, the sodium reacting with water and some of the ions it's producing. And we'll cover that in a later lesson. Now we have potassium metal. We're going down the table here. As potassium is put into the water, you can see that there's a much more dramatic reaction immediately occurs. Potassium both moves around in fizzies, but also catches on fire with a distinctive lilac flame. As we go down further, they also added in some rubidium and we do have a very rapid reaction. So, so far we've seen lithium reacting, followed by sodium, potassium and rubidium. As we've been going down the group, you've seen that the reactions become much more vigorous. So let's now go back and look at the final reaction, that of cesium. And this is what happened when they used cesium. Now, what we've seen so far today are the classic group one science experiments that we would always do in the lab. However, it can be nice to see it done on a slightly larger scale. So if you look at the lesson PowerPoint, you can watch this back later with sound. Um, this is the Brainiac episode, Alkali Metals from Sky One's Brainiac program. I'm going to share with you a little bit of what they did with the bigger two elements at the bottom of group one, which is rubidium and cesium. Let's have a watch together. This first one is rubidium. So as you can see, um, they're setting up carefully, wearing safety equipment, taking a safe distance, and then the scientist in charge is using um, a long tool to make sure that he's not in any way close to the metal that he's inserting into the bathtub to do it on a larger scale. This is rubidium, as you can see from the diagram. Let's watch what happens to the bathtub. quite an explosion as you can see. So that was rubidium. They're then going to finish off, nice slow motion repeat, they're going to finish off with showing us cesium as well. So let's have a watch and see what happens when we look at doing this one last time with cesium. Remember that's the bottom element in the group one metals. And here we go now. And here we go now, let's see what happens with the reaction of cesium. As you can see, very clearly illustrated, as we go down the group one alkali metals, they become more reactive. Now for each of the alkali metals we saw reacting, they underwent a similar type of reaction. They all reacted with water to produce a metal hydroxide and hydrogen. For example, sodium metal reacts with water to produce sodium hydroxide, that's an alkali when dissolved into solution, and hydrogen gas, which was the source of the fizzing gas and the explosion that we saw when it ignited for the more reactive alkali metals. That can also be represented by a symbol equation for those of you who remember our work earlier in science. And we can represent the symbols with the state symbols showing the state that each of those are in. So we have solid sodium metal reacting with liquid water forming an aqueous, that's a solution of sodium hydroxide, which is alkaline, and hydrogen gas. As I've already mentioned, and as indicated by the name of the group, the alkali metals, they react to form alkaline solutions, for example, sodium hydroxide in the case of sodium reacting with water. The definition of an alkali is that a base that dissolves in water. So all each of the alkali metals when they react form a base and that base dissolves in the water to form an alkaline solution. An alkaline solution, which we know from earlier work in last year looking at acids and alkalis, is a solution with a pH of greater than seven. And if we were to add universal indicator solution to the basin or to the bath that we saw after the reaction had happened, it would turn blue or purple. We also saw the hydrogen gas produced. 
On today's worksheet, you've now got a number of questions to answer. You're all looking at group number one, the alkali metals that we've studied this lesson. Your first task is to describe fully what is observed when sodium metal is added to water. Think about all the observations you may have made, things that you've seen or heard or observed. It might be what you saw when the metal was directly added to water or any tests that were carried out and the result of those tests that you could do afterwards. In part two, you then need to write the word equation for the reaction of sodium with water and also the word equation for the reaction of potassium with water. For those of you who would like some extra challenge, you should then try to write the symbol equations for each of these reactions and also to balance them and include state symbols in that. To consolidate your understanding from today's lesson, I'd recommend you take some time after the lesson to watch this Crash Course Chemistry video, which goes through the key points of what we've been understanding about the periodic table. To summarise today's lesson, we've looked into more depth of how the modern periodic table is organised, specifically focusing on the Group 1 elements. We've learned about some of the trends in their physical properties and looked at their chemical properties and how their reactivity increases as we go down the group in the periodic table.